This is gonna be so fun. Join my adventure into the world of off-roading, where I partner with Best Stop, your source for off-road accessories. <laughs> oh yeah. Detroit, a city built on hard work, opportunity, and the promise of a better life. It became the automobile capital of the world with the help of Henry Ford, who introduced the assembly line in 1914. Soon after, the formation of the United Automobile Workers Union set standards for unions across the US. And for migrant workers, it represented a place where the American dream seemed possible, no matter where you were from. I wanted to understand the culture of this resilient city, how Henry Ford built an empire, and the people who call it home. What better way to explore Motor City than in the new Ford Bronco? And with Hollyoaks Off-Road Park nearby, I was able to squeeze in a little playtime. My first stop, the Ford Pickett Plant. The first factory owned and built by the Ford Motor Company and the birthplace of the Model T. Detroit has such a colorful, wonderful history. It's the land of thieves and pirates and barons and anything was possible. Detroit's the biggest boom and bust economy in America. I think Ford was first of all a good man at heart. He saw in the common man the opportunity to build incredible machinery. His recruiting poster, oh, I'm looking for a lot of people with the infinite capacity to not know what can't be done. That whole spirit of we can do anything at a time when America was just expanding and growing. He started here with 30 employees. When he left here in 1910, he had 1,661. Inspired by Ford's adventurous mindset, I pulled over to open up the Trek Top soft top and soak in the spirit of Detroit. All right, let's go enjoy the ride. As I marveled at the hip shops emerging between abandoned buildings in the city's oldest neighborhoods, I felt the tenacity of those who built it, who continue to build it. A city with the belief that through hard work and an open mind, you will create a life worth fighting for. Detroit-style pizza was born at Buddy's, where the first square-shaped pizza was baked in forged steel pans borrowed from local automotive plants. Their east side location is the original, and that's where I met up with my friend Ron, who moved to Detroit a few years ago to work for the Ford Motor Company. Ooh. Hey, tomatoes. 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 Hey, so this is it, it's always rectangular, is that real? You know, like the important thing is that you get cheese all the way to the edge of the crust. Ah, so there's no just plain crust. Detroit kind of had a hard time like 10 years ago or so. I think that a lot of the country kind of like looked to Detroit as, you know, a failed um, city. And all that's really done is kind of galvanize the people who wanted to be here. The automotive industry kind of forms like this pillar that, um, you know, since the beginning has given Detroiters the promise of an entry into the middle class. Yeah. You know? One of the things that um, the big three have done is basically focus on silhouettes that the consumers actually want. So you're seeing fewer sedans and more um, utility vehicles and trucks. Mm, yes, like Broncos. <laughs> one of them. All of them take pride in the fact that these um, iconic vehicles built Four Americans are actually built by Americans right here in Detroit. It was time to take this Bronco off-road. So give me the lay of the land. What, what's out here? It looks kind of uh, ominous. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we are so unique here uh, being in Metro Detroit with an off-road park in 
the urban setting here. We okay. have 110 acres that we're playing on now, and there's another 125 or so that will be future expansion. Yeah. So we've got all kinds of cool opportunities. This area up here is called Holly Glen. It's actually a short course design for higher speeds. We've got motocross features for dirt bikes and ATVs. Oh. One of our coolest features is Mount Magna that's out in the back. Best Stop sent their off-road expert, Tony Carvalho, to teach me the basics. Oh my God. <laughs> it is pouring out right now. Hey. Hey, hey, this is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, a lot of mud. Um, okay, so this is gonna be a water crossing, so yeah. just stay to the left a little bit. All right, sounds All right. good. For rock crawling, you just need to be smooth, not heavy on the throttle, right? Just let the vehicle do the work. It's amazing what these vehicles can do. These right. things have so much traction and so much capability. It's amazing. Okay, now straighten up. Go uh, pull All right, so the park is now open to the public. We had some special access before. So uh, we need to get these flags on because we don't want a collision. And when you're cresting over those hills like that, you can't see anything. But hopefully you can see the flag. All right, that looks good. Time to get dirty. We put back the Trek Top soft top for an open air experience while I attempted to keep up with Tony during the Baja racing. Elated by the high of navigating the park all day, I felt proud and inspired. Just a little over a century ago, the first paved highway was being constructed, and now we have enormous parks built entirely for off-road recreation. Proof that through radical thinking and hard work, the inconceivable becomes reality.